When you look in the syllabus, it's got two words, an angle of repose and angle of static friction. The angle of repose is basically, if I get sand and tip it in a pile, or rocks and tip them in a pile, or flour, or rice, or marbles, or anything, it will form a natural angle of the pile. That angle the pile is sloping back at is called the angle of repose. I've marked it here as theta r. Angle of static friction is similar in that the force of friction is equal to a coefficient times a normal reaction. I'll talk about that later. But if you have a look here, the coefficient of friction is down here. I've got a weight pushing down, a normal reaction, that's Rn, pushing up. I've got the force of friction pushing to the left. And the angle of static friction is the angle that's laid back at. That's actually how it's measured. I hope you can see this okay. This is physically how it's measured in a lab. This is obviously oiled timber. That's plastic. Coefficient of friction of oiled timber on plastic, let me tip this up, is about there. You might say, well, what about a bit of weight? There's a few teaspoons inside an identical bag. Which one slides first? See they're both moving. That angle things slide at is independent of weight because the contact surface here is still plastic on timber. What about the spoon? You might have thought it's the spoon. There's the spoon, there's the plastic bag, which one slides first? The spoon has got a lower coefficient of friction than the plastic bag. Go again. Here is a pencil eraser. Same thing, angle of friction. It's a far higher angle of friction for the pencil eraser to slide. That is physically how they measure coefficient of friction in a lab. It is an incredibly scientific test. They put two things on each other and just carefully lift them up so they're not bumping them and vibrating them. Then when it starts to slide they measure the angle. They repeat that ten times, take the average and there's your coefficient of friction.